calling Mr. John Blum to the stage. Dr. John Blum, I should say. I'm getting plugged in right now. Try and keep away from peace. <laughs> My granddaughter, Rebecca, is 16 years old. She's been looking through my telescope since she was two. When she was seven years old, she drew the picture that I have on the front of this t-shirt that shows herself as an astronaut on the moon. The reason she drew this is that she found out the shocking news that only men had been to the moon, and she wanted to be the first woman on the moon. But she's upgraded her plan since then, and now she's going to Mars. In order to begin her astronaut training, Rebecca has gone to NASA's space camp in Huntsville, Alabama every summer for the last five years. She gave us a talk here at one of our WASP meetings two years ago about space camp. A couple months ago she went to the Kennedy Space Center with her parents, and so here's Rebecca Blum to tell us all about the Kennedy Space Center. I'm a junior here at Cranbrook, and I'm here today to tell you about the Kennedy Space Center and a little bit about Advanced Space Camp, or just went. So the Kennedy Space Center is located in Central Florida, and it attracts around one and a half million people each year. It opened in the August of 1967, and has been NASA's primary launch center for human spaceflight since 1968. It is comprised of multiple museums, with original rockets and shuttles, and other unique experiences I will detail later. I went to the Kennedy Space Center this spring with my family, and I'm going there in November with my grandparents, Rosie and John, and my brother. So here is a map of the Kennedy Space Center. So you can see in the center of the map, that's like the main facilities. So they have the main museums there, places to eat, and then you can see at the bottom right, there's also this extended part of the Kennedy Space Center, and you have to take a bus to get out there, but that has Cape Canaveral and other rockets on display, and you have to take a bus tour. So if you go to the Kennedy Space Center, there's several things you must see. One of them in the top left is the Rocket Garden. The Rocket Garden has tours that lasts around 20 to 30 minutes, and a tour guide takes you around and tells you about each of the rockets. All the rockets are either from the Mercury, Gemini, or Apollo programs, and the tour guide also tells about um, which astronaut went into each rocket. In the bottom left is a picture of the memorial for the astronauts who lost their lives on the Challenger and Columbia disasters. And then in the top right is the Hero and Legends Museum, and that talks about the lives of past astronauts and also astronauts right now. In the bottom right, you can see a picture of the Atlantis shuttle. They have the Atlantis shuttle on display, and they also have a, rock, uh, a Saturn V rocket that launched astronauts to the moon. There's also an IMAX there. When I went there in the spring, I saw a beautiful planet, which shows views of Earth from the ISS. And then there's also a gift shop, which is my personal favorite. <laughs> and um, so there's a lot you can see there. But there's also a lot of activities. And these activities are great if you're just going to go um, alone or if you have a family or spouse, because there's many different activities. For example, there's the bus tours, which I mentioned earlier, where you can take a bus and you can go out into the Cape Canaveral. And you can also see a rocket launch. The different bus tours that are offered are the Kennedy Space Center bus tour and the Kennedy Space Center Explore tour, where you visit the historic Launch Complex 39 and the launch pads used by SpaceX in ULA. During the bus tours, you can also see the famous rockets SLC 34, used during the first and seventh Apollo missions, the Mercury Atlas, SpaceX rockets, and the SLS system. The center image shows a rocket launch, showing that you can also go and see a rocket launch. I think the next one's coming up in July. There's also something really cool called the ATX Astronaut Training Program, which you can see to the right. And when I went there in spring, I didn't have time to go on any bus tours or the ATX Astronaut Training Program, but I'm going to do that in November. So the ATX Astronaut Training Program is really unique because you have the opportunity to conduct a spacewalk 
in a microgravity environment using a simulator, and you can explore the Martian surface using virtual reality. You can, there's also, uh, they simulate a launch and landing on Mars. On top of that, the Kennedy Space Center allows you to eat lunch with an astronaut, seen in the top left, and they have something really cool called the shuttle launch experience, which is the bottom left, which is sort of like a 40 theater where you sit in a seat and they'll strap you in and the seat will shake and move around and <laughs> you feel like you're launching into space. That was a lot of fun. And so the highlight, in my opinion, of going to the Kennedy Space Center was lunch with an astronaut. I got to meet Wendy Lawrence. She was the first woman to fly in space after graduating from the U.S. Naval Academy. She has gone on the shuttle Endeavour, and when she was there, she studied ultraviolet radiation from galaxies, and she's been on three other missions to the ISS. When she was there, she talked about her experiences in space, and she also, I, I, I got to ask her a question, and I asked her, can you be an astronaut if you have allergies? And she said, yes, so we're good. <laughs> So here's a couple pictures of me and my family at the Kennedy Space Center. So at the left, you can see me in front of the NASA sculpture at the front. At the right, you can see the solid rocket boosters and the external tank of the Atlantis shuttle. And behind those is the building that actually has the Atlantis shuttle in it. To the left is a picture of me and my brother in front of a model of the Canada Arm. The Canada Arm is a robot on the ISS that allows astronauts to conduct spacewalks and go to different areas of the ISS to fix something that something broke, or since it's a robot, it can um, also attach like new modules to the ISS and fix the ISS if there's a problem too. In the middle, there's a picture of me, my brother, and my little cousin Jordan in a little capsule at the um, rocket garden. And then to the right is a picture of me and my little cousin Hannah. We're going down two giant slides that they have at the museum. So you can see it's also really family friendly because they have these sides, they have a lot of hands-on um, exhibits, and they also have a giant play structure. So now I'm going to talk about Space Camp. So Space Camp is in Hunts Huntsville, Alabama, and it's totally different than the Kennedy Space Center. I just wanted to talk about two different experiences I had at uh, like a space facility. So totally different, totally separate, different places. So this year I went to Advanced Space Camp. This was my fifth year going. And it was really cool because you do a lot of different things at Advanced Space Camp. It's a week long program. To the left you can see where um, we sleep. It's called Habitat One. And it's sort of models, like a, sort of like a shuttle inside where you sleep. And to the right you can see a mission in progress. So missions at Space Camp are really cool. What they do is you have a team and they divide you up into different areas so they have a mission control they have like a shuttle and also an ISS and they get everyone a separate job there's for example like in mission control there was a flight director a CAPCOM to communicate between mission control and the shuttle a PACOM to communicate between mission control and the ISS and a lot of other jobs and then in the shuttle there's a commander and pilot and mission specialist and the ISS are scientists, and everyone has a headset, and there's a list of things in Mission Control, and Mission Control uh, has to keep track of what things need to be done, so they'll communicate things to the shuttle. And there's, in the shuttle, it's so cool, because there's panels everywhere with tons of buttons, and you have to like locate the panels and switch the buttons, and it's really fun. And we had three missions this year. The third one was a three-hour Mars mission, and because it was three hours, they decided to give us medical anomalies. So what that means is um, a counselor will come and hand a slip of paper to a camper, and it will have some symptoms on it, and the actor will, uh, sorry, the camper will act out those symptoms, and then everyone has to work together and contact the CMO or chief medical officer and figure out what the, uh, what the disease is or problem is and how to solve it. And in my group, the flight director died of a heart attack, so <laughs> she couldn't get to him in time. But she still made it back alive on our Mars mission, so I'd say it was a success. A success. Yeah. And then we also went scuba diving. That's something different about advanced space camp. At normal space camp, you just um, just go swimming, but there's like team exercises in the pool. But now that we're older, we got to do advanced space, and now we, we got to do scuba diving. And that was 
really cool. I panicked a little bit, but <laughs> it was a really great experience. And we also go to briefings, which are like little lectures or talks, which can be about totally anything space related. So we had one on uh, the mechanics of space flight, Newton's Law is one of my favorites was one about how telescopes work. So what they did is they showed two lasers which were parallel to each other, two like laser beams. And what they, the counselors did is they put a piece of curved glass in front of the lasers and the two parallel lasers like converged into a single point, which was really cool because that showed how the photons all concentrate to one point through a telescope, which is how you see the uh, image so clearly. And that was really cool to sort of see that happening. Another great thing about space camp is the groups. So I was in group Acidalia, which is a plane on Mars. All the groups are named after uh, Mar different things on Mars. And you're divided into groups based on your age, and you get really close with your group throughout the week. So on the left is a picture of my group after the Mars mission. And to the right is a picture of me and my engineering group. So your engineering group is, so what they do is your main group, they further divide that up into four, uh, into several other groups, each comprising of four people. And that's your engineering group. We were the four rocketeers, like the three musketeers, but the four rocketeers. And what you do in your engineering groups is there's engineering challenges, and you get points for doing these challenges. And at the end of the week, um, they add up all the points together, and the engineering group with the most points wins. And Different challenges you can do is there's an egg and you have to protect it from a blowtorch by creating like heating sh shields or heating tiles with materials. And then they also have a rocket launch and you have to put an egg in the rocket and make sure you bring the egg back safely. You can, we created a robot um, to sort of simulate making like a Mars rover. And then we also put a flight suit. We like made a flight suit for an egg. And so, yeah, a lot of eggs. <laughs> So thank you, and I'm open to questions if anyone has any questions. Is there one up here? Like this okay, one? Okay, I can't see. No. Is there one there? Oh, yeah. yeah. So out of the five years that you've been, which year has been the most rewarding? Or have they just built it? You know, one experience or the other? Okay, so every year is great. I think the first three years I went, it was like the least intense, even though it was a lot of fun because you get closer to your groups every year. And last year I did aviation challenge, which is a little different than space camp because it focuses more on uh, aviation to flight and also the military. And that was probably the most like physically hard one I'd say, but that was also a lot of fun. But that one was really rewarding. And because it's something that I've never done before. And then this one, there's a lot of rewarding things about Advanced Space Camp too, such as getting to the bottom of the pool when scuba diving, and also doing these long missions that you prepare a long time for. So yeah, I'd say the older you get, the better it becomes. Yeah. Um, what is the plan if someone dies in space? Is it to put them on ice or put them out the airlock or what? <laughs> well, during the simulations, because you kind of need a flight director, so or everyone, you need everyone. So what we did with when our flight director died is they got revived after like five minutes, but like. Do you know in real life what the plan is? With oh, I'm sure there's backups, right? Hopefully. But they do with the per the body. Though. Oh. Hmm. My talk? guess is do you, you know? know. You don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I can search it up for okay. you and, and find out for you. Yeah. They tell you how you can prepare to become a woman astronaut, what you're going to have to go through in school. Okay, so yeah, they didn't talk about a lot about that, but I've done my own research, and what you need, I think, is you need like a master's degree or a bachelor's degree in some field of STEM, and then you need to have like four years of like practice in that field, or you can go through the military route, and you need like a thousand hours of like in flight like training and then also after you study if you went like the science route or like the math and engineering route you also it's good to have like scuba certifications and like pilot certifications and you also want to stand out so there's unique things you can also do um i don't know specifically i know there's 
things like, I know this one girl, she was the first person to complete the NASA Passport Program, which is where you go to all the different NASA sites throughout the US, and you could also um, go to a space camp, which is what I'm doing, and I'm also thinking about doing something called Possum Academy next year, which is uh, way more intense than space camp. It's about a week long, and it's in Florida, and they actually take you in planes and like simulate like microgravity and stuff as you like free fall, and there's like lots of um, learning about the atmosphere and stuff. So, yeah, that's my plan. Do they still call it ICBM roll on the cake? I have not heard that. <laughs> uh, those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, yeah. So what are you planning on being up on the space station? I want to be a mission specialist. I really like biology, so I want to go through that route. That's great. So we should use your autograph now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? You have to talk to our agent. <laughs>